Good morning from a beautiful day in Rome. It's like very sunny skies out there. We're actually heading out because today is our pasta making experience. Hey, yeah, grab the keys, the mask. N95 mask is what they want you to use here. Do you have your vaccine card and all that stuff? So today is our pasta making class. So we're gonna go walk over there. Our pasta making class started at 11 a.m. and lasted three hours. When we arrived, our instructor Alessandro had our cooking stations ready for us along with all of the ingredients we would be using. Everything was sanitized and all of the Airbnb COVID protocols were followed. In today's class, we would be making two types of pasta, fettuccine and ravioli. After we all washed our hands, we all got our ingredients ready and had to weigh out 200 grams of flour and crack two eggs into the flour. We started mixing everything with a fork, but eventually we needed to get our hands dirty and started to knead our pasta dough. Alessandro came around and made sure everyone's dough was perfect. While our dough was resting, we all went into the kitchen and started making our pasta sauce. We all took turns doing different things. That's perfect. Okay, so I show you how to prepare the pasta. Okay, so how to prepare the pasta. I show you all the single steps. The pasta is ready. It is perfect. We are just to cut in half just to make a perfect half like this one. Keep one half into the plastic film because we will use it later for the fettuccine. So we have to preserve all the humidity inside the pasta. And then, so we can use this one later. And now, first of all, we have just to put some flour on the board and then push and down and put flour in both sides of the pasta. Like that. Just to put flour in both sides and push it down just to keep it thinner. After that, we have to use our hand roller and then exactly in the middle push down and go back and forward just to keep it thinner like that two or three times it is enough like that when it's just like that after two or three times you just twist 20 degrees and then go back and forward just to keep it thinner wider and longer if the pasta starts to stick to the board or to the hand roller it means it is so sticky so we have to put some flour upside down and then go back and forward just to keep it thinner, wider and longer like that. Squeeze top and up, then it's going on to make a little balloon like this one. Remember, the sac a poche has to be vertical, not horizontal, because if you put it horizontal, you have a doggy poo. We don't like doggy poo. Inside the shape of the raviolo, just to keep the pasta sticky. Do not put too much water. And let's go in on. Take the other half. And overlap. So now we have to remove all the air from the ravioli. Because if you put the ravioli with air inside into the body water, they are not exploding, just breaking. So from the middle part, start to close the pasta. Like this. And then with your thumbs, let's go around the amount of spinach to remove, to push it out and to close the pasta around the amount of spinach, one by one. It is so easy, like this, and push it out from this part into the other direction. One close to the other one, and here we are. But remember, with a little bit of practice, you can make 100 of your in 15, 20 minutes. You can do that. Okay, they are ready. And look at the, you can look at the color of the filler through the pasta, that means it is a high quality one. After that, you take the ravioli shaper, exactly in the middle of the shape, remember to press and twist, just to be sure that the pasta is cut in the right way. Let's go in on, one by one, press and twist, press and twist. Continue, let's go in on, one by one, press and twist, press and twist. Remember the cut, you have to cut exactly with the filler in the middle of the shape, because if you cut with the filler close to the border, the filler can go out into the boiling water, right? So the filler in the middle of the ravioli shape. After Alessandro demonstrated, it was now our turn to roll out, fill, and create our raviolis. The filling we used for our ravioli was spinach and ricotta. Once we all finished making our ravioli, we went into the kitchen and started making our fettuccine. We all took turns using the pasta machine and cranking out some fresh fettuccine. Okay, keep rolling. And take from bottom side. Yes, fold the three part. 
ove glape poždamo. In je tudi pa s mašin, keep proving. And then, yes, you know everything, because you just hear five people, so... Now, upside down. Reduce the thickness. Press and roll that one. Take to the second of the line. And to the pasta machine again. And the pasta has a perfect thickness for the fettuccine. Okay, good so job, so chef. This was our raw pasta. Alessandro served us some red wine and we enjoyed it while he cooked the pasta for us. Once the pasta was finished, he served us and we all got to eat together. It was delicious. So guys, we just finished our pasta making class and it was so much fun. It was fun, delicious, amazing. We met really cool people. Yeah. I did not expect that. We're stuffed, by the way. We're so we stuffed. Oh my so gosh. so much food. It was really good and really simple. Once you do it, it's like, what? That's it? Yeah, it was very easy yeah. to make. So I highly, we highly recommend you guys do something like this. So now we just stumbled upon a cat sanctuary. Can you guys see all the kitties down there? There's one kitty there. One, there's four. One kitty there. There's another one in there. Lots of cats here. Huh? All right, so we just happened to walk past the Pantheon, but we've been inside before, right? Yep, we have. But when we were on our Symphony of the Seas cruise, we had to stop in Rome and we came here to see this. And it's actually quite a long line. All right, so we were on our way to the church, actually, that he wanted yeah, to so see. We're, so we're going to see some Caravaggios. Um, and he told us where to find it. So Caravaggio? Caravaggio. Who's that? He's a Renaissance painter, very famous. Finally, the most beautiful sight of all here in Italy, in my opinion, oh my the God. Colosseum. We just walked to a few of those sites, and the um, Colosseum is the one that I really wanted to see the most. Although I've already been to the Colosseum many times, I just can't get enough of it. You always want to see it every time that you're in Rome, you know? How many times have you seen the Colosseum? Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it volte. Do it volte. I don't know about you, but I need some gelato in my life. We've only had gelato one time since we've been here. We need yeah. to have it at least like three or four more times before we leave. At least. At least. A few moments later. We did it. We got some gelato right here at that gelateria. Right here. And this gelateria is actually one that we've been to in the past. And it's right by the Colosseum. We were actually a little worried. We thought that it was no longer open, but thankfully it is. And look, ancient ruins. Yeah, guys, look. Ancient ruins. <laughs> Please tell us the importance of these ruins. I'm curious, I think these were maybe may have been homes or something, I don't know. Homes? Possibly. What else could they have been? Maybe it was connected to um, the Colosseum. Maybe. Maybe it's where they the housed all the bulls or something. I don't know, I could be totally wrong. <laughs> Alright, cheers to gelato. What flavor do you get? Tracciatella? No. Um, Fiore de latte and Nutella. Oh, and I got pistachio. Good morning, everybody. It's a new day. It's our last full day here. I'm having a little breakfast, a little cornetto. It's uh, filled with pastry cream, and then we have a little coffee right here. Today, we are going to the Vatican, to the Vatican Museum in Vatican City, and John's very excited about that, right? I am. So we gotta walk over there. We bought tickets online, and we have to be there at 9 a.m. So it's like 7.30 right now. So we have to walk over. It's about, I think it's a 1.9 mile walk. So it might take us like an hour or so to get there. So we'll bring you guys along with us for our last full day here. We still haven't had an Aperol spritz, so today we have to have at least one Aperol spritz and more gelato, because yesterday we only had that one, and I feel like we have to have more gelato. There's one right near us. Yes. Yeah. Blue ice, yeah. Because that pistachio gelato yesterday was so good. 
So we gotta get some more today. For our final day, it's so sad. It is a brisk morning, y'all. It's 40 degrees, the coldest that it's been here since we've been here in Rome. The mask actually really does protect you from the cold, doesn't yeah. it? It keeps your face warm. Like this is the most uncomfortable mask, but it really does keep you warm. After a 20 minute walk, we see uh, St. Peter's Basilica, which is right back there. So we're almost at the Vatican. Excited? I am. I'm honestly so shook and so surprised as to how quick we got here. It's quick. It's really uh, close to our apartment. It looks far on the map. Everything looks far on the map, but it really isn't. Yeah, so, so that's St. Peter's Basilica, and this whole area in here is St. Peter's Square. La Piazza di San Pietro, and that's La Basilica di San Pietro. And there's actually not that many people here, which I'm kind of glad that we bought tickets early. Early. They, said, they, say, they say to buy them early, so you just gotta wake up early. Yeah. And time difference is no joke, people. We could not fall asleep. Right? I know, we've been jet lagged every night that we've been here. I thought like after the first night we'd be good, but no. every night we've been like up in the middle of the night, although, just like awake on our phones. Although I have heard if you take melatonin, it helps you reset you, and we, we didn't bring any. All right, we've made it here to the Vatican Museum, and this is the line for people who have tickets. And that's the line for people who don't have tickets. And just like that, we're in. Literally took us like three minutes. Now we're gonna go get our audio guides. Somewhere around here. We purchased audio guides so it could, you know, tell us all about the art. That face. Oh my god, my back, my lower back. We've been doing a lot of walking. So we just finished the Vatican Museum and we stopped at the cafeteria. We're about to have some cappuccinos and uh, two cornetos with uh, pastry cream on the inside, as you can see there. So we're currently outside in the gardens of the Vatican Museum. And this is what the Sistine Chapel looks like because we, were, we weren't able to film instead of the Sistine Chapel or take pictures or any of that. Uh, but I'm sure, you know, if you're really interested, you can go online and find images. But this is what the Sistine Chapel looks like. <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Stretching. Stretching? Yeah, my back hurts. Are you glad we got those audio guides? It helped for some things, but you don't really need them. You don't really need them, yeah. They were what, eight? Eight a piece, I think? Yeah, that was a waste of money. That was a waste. <laughs> All right, we have just exited the Vatican Museum, and now look at the line that there is. This morning, there was barely any people, and now the line has grown longer. And I think that's the line for people with tickets, which this morning, there was no line for people with tickets, right? Yeah, so... Come early. Get here early. <laughs> yeah. Moral of the story, get here early. So we are back at St. Peter's Square, where we were this morning at 8 a.m. Now look at it. Look at all these people. Oh my goodness. This is what it was like that, that one summer that we came here on the cruise. So when we were here this morning, there was nothing. No, yeah, nobody. Zero. This is so beautiful though. I really love this square. This piazza. We are back at the apartment. Well, we just got back from the Vatican. And since we were flying back home tomorrow to the United States, we have to have an antigenic COVID test done within 24 hours of our flight departure. So we actually got these at home COVID kits. So John and I are doing our COVID test at the moment. And right now we have a timer going, six minutes. Uh, we already did the swab. We actually had to be observed by a, a medical professional who was actually uh, watching us via the webcam. So six minutes. 
minutes, we'll get our COVID results and then they'll email it to us. So in order for these COVID kits to be like valid for travel, you have to be observed by someone. I mean, you, you can do it without someone watching you. Right. But it, you won't be able to use it for travel. Once we got here, we realized we're actually right next to a COVID testing site. Yeah. So you could do that instead if you want. Right. Um, so you either can do this if you're not sure where you're at, or you could just pay for it. Mm -hmm. I think it's 22 euros. So yeah. So some places are really super strict. Oh right. So the Vatican was not was not strict at all. Like they looked at my our vaccine card and they were like, oh, okay, thanks, come on in. But the restaurant was like looking at the dates of the shot of the vaccines. My God, they took out like binoculars and the restaurant was more was more uh, strict than the actual Vatican Museum to eat outside mind you yeah we were just eating outside that to day. eat outside and like they even have partitions so yeah so every place is different some places are super strict and others are like whatever yeah, yeah you got a card cool just you know fair warning thank you baby Jesus we are negative that means we can go back home yes. <laughs> negative both of us now I feel better and relieved. There's always still like that little bit of like worry in the back of your mind. Like what if I'm positive and I can't go home? So now they're gonna email us the results and we can upload it to the airline website and then we should, we can also show it tomorrow at the airport. They're probably gonna ask us for it tomorrow too. All right, time to go eat and have an Aperol spritz. We finally got our Aperol spritz, our first one of the vacation and we're on day four. <laughs> Cheers. Three hours later. <laughs> this is the pizza that I just ordered. <laughs> The lasagna bo uh, bolognese. All right, well, enjoy. <laughs> That's small ass portion. Burr. Food was decent, but now it's time for some gelato. Ooh, what's on my camera? Gelato time. It's really a beautiful day here. Unfortunately, it's so cold. Yes. <sighs> You're probably thinking, how crazy am I eating ice cream in this cold weather? But hey, you gotta take advantage. I got pistachio, my new favorite gelato flavor. I used to be a Nutella gelato guy, but now. I love pistachio gelato. <sighs> I'm out of breath. We literally ran here because it's so cold and we just like power walked all the way back to the apartment. We are just getting packed to leave early tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna wrap up this vlog right now. Please make sure you're subscribed so you can catch the next video where we'll be traveling back to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> We're gonna travel business class on Delta, but this time they changed the airplane on us last minute and it's now gonna be the Delta One Suites, which is a different seat than the plane that we had coming here. So we're very, very excited about that. We were not expecting that. It was originally supposed to be the aircraft that brought us here, that same Airbus 330, but now it's the 330. 900 Neo, which is gonna be much much nicer and more comfortable. So upgrade. Yeah, the total upgrade for sure So we're looking forward to that. So make sure you subscribe have the bell notifications on so you guys can catch that video And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye But we've been inside before right? Yep, we have and you can see the video right here, but I don't think I recorded it here <laughs> You can always count on John to make noise when I'm trying to film. Yeah. Right? Were you farting?